All right, so problem number two uh, could be a wide range of problems, but it will be calculating the energy. Um, so we're not going to see any of this, but look back at the shaft work, look back at the uh, volt times current, look back at uh, the work by a spring, uh, look back at all of those. Uh, look back at those problems of like, if you are heating a house and the heat is escaping at this rate and things are entering at this rate where you know where we're trying to sum up the energy conservation of energy so so look back at those problems uh but also we've got some of these pump problems these dam problems this one is a river going toward a lake all right so river flowing toward a lake at an average velocity of 9 meters per second at this rate let's see is that m dot or is that v dot that's V dot, that's volumetric flow rate at a location 20 meters above the lake's surface. Determine the total mechanical energy per unit mass of the river <clears throat> water. Right. Energy per unit mass is like specific energy, lowercase e. Uh, mechanical energy is kinetic energy, potential energy, flow work. Uh, so, do we have kinetic energy? Do we have potential energy? Do we have flow work? Um, <clears throat> yeah, we've got kinetic energy. It's going at nine meters per second. Yes, we have potential energy uh, because it, it's a, it's at some height. Uh, we don't have flow work. Flow work, not, well, uh, flow work, I'm looking for a change in pressure. So part A, determine the total kinetic energy per unit mass. Uh, that would be like the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. All right. Lowercase potential energy is just G times H. Uh, lowercase kinetic energy is just one half v squared. Um, you know, go back and look at that page where we looked at all those definitions of all the energies and their um, formulas for uh, specific energy, total energy, and power. Uh, so if it's asking for specific energy, uh, it's just g times h, uh, 9.81 meters per second squared, a uh, height of 20 meters. Uh, the units right there are meters squared per second squared. Um, we could really look at that unit conversion. Maybe let's do that. See if y'all can do that with me here. Um, knowing that a uh, Newton, Newton is a kilogram meter Per second squared so a Newton per kilogram would be a meter per second squared uh, then this is a Newton meter this is equal to a Newton meter per sorry a Newton per kilogram meter sorry I'm just trying to do this on the fly probably shouldn't Newton per kilogram is a meter per second squared so this is a Newton per kilogram meter, and a Newton meter is a joule per kilogram. All right, did all that to say, this is going to give me units of joules per kilogram, not kilojoules per kilogram. Most, most of the problems we have been doing have been in kilojoules per kilogram. All right, but just um, multiplying this through, I'm going to get joules per kilogram. All right, so anyway, uh, potential energy <clears throat> right here. Potential energy right here, G times H. Kinetic energy, one-half. Now, usually, you know, you think of kinetic energy as one-half mv squared, but this is per unit mass. We're dividing out that m, so it's just one-half v, nine uh, meters per second squared. All right. Anyway, so this would give me <coughs> lowercase c of 236.7, but it's joules per kilogram. 236.7 joules per kilogram. Okay. Potential energy and kinetic energy, if you're just in meters, meters per second squared, meters per second, uh, you're going to be in joules, all right, joules per kilogram, not kilojoules per kilogram. <clears throat> okay, then it asks for the, okay, what about the maximum power potential energy for the river or that location? We could, we could redo all of this, and we could say this E dot is PE dot plus KE dot. Or we can just take this and multiply it times m dot. All right, this is m dot times lowercase e. 
we can just multiply this times m dot uh, times lowercase c. And so that's what I think I'm going to do. Here, m dot is, did they give us m dot? No. Did they give us m dot? No. They gave us v dot. But I know that m dot, mass flow rate, is rho times v dot. I know that m dot is rho times v dot. That should be on your formula sheet that you, you write on your stuff. You can have, a, remember, you can have an um, index card of formulas on there. Um, or the units would help you, right? If, if I want mass flow rate kilograms per second, but I've got meters cubed per second, what could I do? I could take that meters cubed per second and multiply it times, divided by meters cubed times by kilograms, that's the density. That's the density, right? Take that m dot equals rho times v dot. All right, did they give us the row of water? No. So we can assume that it's just a standard uh, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed of water. Um, a V dot of 400 meters cubed per second. And the energy 236.7 joules per kilogram if... If I just multiplied that through, I would be in joules per second. Is that correct? If I multiplied this through, I would be in joules per second, which is what? So if I just did 1,000 times 400 times 237, my answer would be a very, very large number, and it would be in watts. Um, or I could change it. 10 to the 6 would be megawatts. So I've got 94.6, let's say 94.68 megawatts. That is my power if I thought about all the different types of energy that that water has. That water has kinetic energy and potential energy. Um, so if I could get all that energy out, uh, I could get 94.68 megawatts out of it. Okay. We've done a lot of problems where uh, it's just a dam, right? We've just dammed up a uh, water. And so if it's just a, a dam, then there's no kinetic energy, right? You're, you're getting all the energy just out of the potential energy due to water. But this one was a river, so we had both the kinetic energy and the potential energy of the water. Units are important. This m dot and v dot, be careful. What, what, what does your equation call for and what is the um, problem statement actually giving you? Uh, units are important. Know the density of water. Um, all right, but also, uh, how about efficiencies? How about efficiencies? This is the maximum that we could get out, uh, but you know, if this, if they tell us the efficiency um, of this power generator, then you know we're not going to get we're not going to get all that power out of it. Um, but then also look back at those problems where you've got a pump that's pumping uh, fluid up to uh, a reservoir or a pump that is increasing the velocity of the fluid and look back at those efficiencies um, if you know the efficiency of the pump then you just take the total um, or, or the or the motor uh, you take the total power that you input into that motor you're not going to get all of that to the shaft of the pump um, and then a lot of times that efficiency that Eta is the work actual of the work that you put into it. Uh, the work actual is really how, how much height are you raising the fluid? How much uh, increase in kinetic energy and potential energy are you putting into the, giving into the fluid versus how much you need to put in to get the, the actual work out of it? Uh, so even though we didn't do that in this problem, be sure to look at those um, efficiency and pumps uh, problems. Uh, in addition to everything in chapter two, right? This is kind of a chapter two problem, um, conservation of energy, all right?